So we've got something really, really special for you today. As you can see here in front of me, I have my, my first prototype. Uh, this is the one time in a long time that I've actually done a dry run on something because, well, it's a little bit different. It's not like your typical flower that we make. So I wanted to make sure that um, I had some experience making it. I'm very happy with how it turned out. We're gonna add a lot more to it as far as inking goes, um, just to you know really make it stand out. But um, kudos to my team, Ron, who spent probably about three days tinkering with his prototypes to get it just right, and um, Diana for bringing it all together and digitizing it and making it very easy to do actually. So I'm gonna show you how that works. Of course, we've got a little planter to go along with it. And we're gonna start with that since it's, uh, well, we kind of need it so that we can uh, use it to kind of store the bromeliad, which is what we're making. And um, well, the, the planter is very simple actually. So what we can do and because we've got little markers on this, it can actually work flat, which you guys know I like to do whenever possible. I've got some panels that are gonna go onto the actual sides here. I went ahead and I inked these. Um, I did these by hand where I used my little ink applicator. I took some medium green and just kind of brushed it on. I'm gonna show you some inking uh, when it comes to the actual flower here in just a moment. But let's get these on first and then get this thing together. We'll get our foam in there just so that as we're working on the actual bromeliad, uh, we have a place to kind of set it while we, uh, well, work on it. So you'll notice that on the actual planter here, there's a series of little score marks to help you with the alignment of these panels. So let's get those in place. I've got ink all over my hands because I did a lot of did a lot of pre-prep so that I wouldn't have to sit here and ink everything on camera, which again is going to be pretty redundant. Um, so yeah, let's get this on here. I'm uh, I'm hitting the panel here on the outer edge just to make sure that that sits nice and flush and doesn't come peeling back. Again, just kind of using the little guides that were put onto these pieces here by our lovely designer, engineer Diana. And I really gotta give Ron kudos for this one. He was toying with the idea of doing one of these for quite some time and uh, finally did it. And I'm very, very happy with the end result. This is gonna be great as a little gift. Uh, of course, in some places like nursing homes and hospitals where, you know, depending on the circumstance, live plants are not allowed. This is a great little gift to give someone there or in a retirement community. You don't have to water it and it's beautiful. I'm probably gonna use this as a centerpiece on my table, probably throughout summer until fall arrives and I bring out the topiary or maybe some sort of new centerpiece. So we'll see. And let's get the last one on here. This, this little planter, this is gonna be easy, but you'll be surprised at how easy the bromeliad is. It's really not that difficult because of the way it's engineered and planned out. We've got a little numbering system on there so you really can't go wrong. And, uh, you know, watch the video maybe once. I'm gonna give you as many tips as I can based on what I've learned during the process. And hopefully, your first time around, you'll get it just as good as I did my first time around. Okay, and I have no doubt that you will. All right, so our panels are on all four sides. Now what we wanna do is join this together so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put glue on one side here. Let's get our glue on this tab here. And then of course, I want to get some glue right out to the very edge so that we have a nice, nice seam there. And I'm gonna just kind of paint that out to the, to the edge with my finger. And that kind of actually makes it tacky and 
when I grab this other side here and connect it, it'll have such a nice tack on it that I don't, I'm not going to have to sit there and wait forever for it to grab a hold. Okay, so there's that. Make sure you get it really good and then you can flip it over onto itself and kind of press down there. And that also helps us ensure that we've got it nice and lined up correctly. And maybe just give it a press here or there just to make sure that it's nice and connected. Okay, so we can flip over the middle section and you'll see here that this part is gonna connect perfectly there. So we can kinda continue working flat, which is always nice. So let's get our glue on the other tab here and just bring that right out to the very edge. Just paint that nice and gently onto the tab there. I'm gonna dab some glue out to the edges there. And you can literally put this down and just press that down into place. Give that a second to get its initial hold and then we can flip it over onto itself again and apply some pressure there. Okay. All right, so there is our planter taking shape. And we can flip it, flip it over like this. Let's move that out of the way. And let's get our glue on the three tabs at the bottom here. Let me start by working the inner tab. And then, you guessed it, I'm gonna do a nice little line right out to the edge. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there we go. There we go. And if that first one, I got a little excess there, so I'm just gonna kind of spread it over to the other sides. Now flare these up just a tad, and then we can go ahead and close it. And just try to line it up on the side opposite of where it's already hinged. That is your best bet for making sure that the other sides just kind of fall into place. Try to kind of hold them all down, all the sides here down until it gets nice and tacky and starts to hold. And then we can flip it over and push from the inside to get the rest of the surface area of those tabs to hold. Okay, there we go. And throw a little bit of glue along those tabs in there, maybe a little bit in the center. And then grab this piece, which is your little liner, it's just to kind of reinforce the bottom. And press that down. Just run your finger along the perimeter there, and voila. Okay, so there is the beginning of our planter. And then, of course, we couldn't just leave it like that. We have to add a little beautiful trim piece for the top. And we're gonna do this just in sections, just so that we don't try to do too much at once. So there's a lot of little details on here. Do your best to get your glue on as many of them as possible, but focus primarily on the top, the edges, and then just a little bit here, definitely out to the extremities here. Okay, and then again, kind of bat that a little bit if you need to, if you got too much and Place this down on the corner, make sure it's nice and flush with the top, and then just press down like so. We can put this down in our surface to press down on that evenly so we don't go warping this thing at all. And that is sitting nicely. And the edge looks pretty darn good. And that looks really good. Okay, so got that down. You can kind of flip it over like this and continue with the rest of this. Just a nice light pressure on your glue bottle here. You don't want, you don't want too much of this coming out. We've got a nice, well, I guess it's kind of a, a salmon colored paper. And if a little bit of glue pops out on this color, it may not be that visible, but we always wanna do our best, obviously. I'm gonna throw a little extra glue right here on the very end and just kind of dab that a little bit. 
so that that part doesn't come pulling off at all. And this should just be able to kind of flop on here. You still need to make sure that it's nice and aligned with the top. The rest of it should fall into place if you do that. And then we can place it down on our surface and press down. And there we go. Okay, so that's one half. And you can see what that's starting to look like. Very pretty. And it's kind of curving in. We're just kind of pushing it out a little bit just to straighten it out. And that's fine. We're going to fill this up with, uh, well, there's going to be some foam in here, obviously, but you can also fill it in with some other things to kind of push it out. All right, so on to the next half of this. Um, pretty much the same thing. I'm going to start with one side and just get my glue, get my glue going here. Trying to fill in these little nooks, little crannies. Of course, the extremities here on this little floor design. I guess that's kind of what it looks like. And then, of course, right out to the very edge there so that we don't have the edge pulling apart or away from our structure. And I would, again, place this on the corner here where this thing's folded and then use your finger to match that up with the top. And then that should meet up nicely with the other edge. And it does run your finger along the top again, just to make sure that it is nice and aligned and then press down from the inside. There we go. And that is sitting nicely. You can see how nicely that meets up there. And then all we have to do is just finish it up here on the other side. And there's way too much glue there. Okay. Okay, work those little nooks and crannies, get it out to the extremities there. A little bit here, a little bit there. And then of course, right out to the very edge. I'm gonna pick that up and just spread that out to the very, very, very edge. Okay, and then just grab that and just fold it over to the other side. There we go. And it should be nice and flush with the top as well. Okay, so let's just put that down on our surface, press down. And our planter is pretty much done. Okay. All right. So there is our beautiful planter. And um, I've already pre-cut the styrofoam here. Um, you can use whatever type of styrofoam you want. And I'm going to hot glue that into place so it doesn't move on us. Okay. I've already kind of used this before just to kind of test it out. So just figure out the shape. Uh, there's really no right or wrong way to cut this out. Just as long as we're able to take our dowel and get it in there when all said and done, that's really the most important thing. Okay. So just get that done. And then, um, you're going to grab your dowel. This is a five eighth inch dowel and it comes, uh, it's a foot long, but you want to trim off one inch off the bottom. Okay. So as you can see here, let's see, I don't know if you can see that. Well, yeah, you can. Yeah. It's about 11. I have mine at 11 inches. Okay. So, um, and however you need to get this in here, you may want to start with a smaller dowel and just poke a hole with a smaller dowel. I'm just doing this just to demonstrate. Okay. And then you could kind of maybe even kind of wiggle it around a little bit and then eventually, well, maybe even just kind of break into it a little bit and then eventually you should be able to kind of jam the wider one in there. Okay. I'm just doing that as an example. Okay. This is, this is how our dowel is going to sit, but we need to take it out for now. 
I'm gonna show you a few things that I did here as far as inking. Um, so there's, all the pieces are kind of the same. And the top of the top of the flower starts off in our case, it's a pink. So I did some inking on all these pieces and then it starts to kind of change color. It gets a little deeper, a little darker. Um, so I used a red on this to you know show that natural progression. And then uh, once we get away from the actual leaves, I'm sorry, the, the flowers, we get into the leaf portion and the first set of leaves. And I'll, I'll explain all this and, and the order in which everything goes in just a moment, but um, it starts with lighter colored leaves and then it gets into a, a deeper, darker colored leaf. Okay, so um, on the actual flowers, which are you know the pinks and the peaches here, there's really nothing that you need to, I mean, you don't have to ink if you don't want. It's probably gonna look a lot nicer if you do. Uh, but as far as the flower petals go, other than inking, you don't really need to do much. And also, I did ink on both sides because both sides are going to be visible, uh, more so at the top, less so at the bottom. But I did ink both sides just because I wanted it to look really nice. Now, um, when the leaves start to come in, they're a lighter color. And you'll notice that these leaves have little veins, just one solid line going through the center. On the lighter colored leaves, I used a yellow marker. Uh, it's actually a Sharpie. I've got a fine point Sharpie. I did it in yellow. I didn't want to make it green because that would have been too bold for this color. I wanted to, you know, give the illusion of a vein, but it's still kind of, um, you know, not as prominent. And then on the green ones, I just went with a lime green Sharpie. And all I did was, and you'll notice that, uh, all of these leaves have little score marks here going down the center. And all I did was I simply took and grabbed my ruler and figured out where that center point is. And then I lined it up with the score mark, not completely on top of it. I needed to be above it just a little bit because this thing's pretty thick. And then I literally just took this very light pressure right up against the ruler right down the center and I've got my beautiful little vein. Okay, um, so that's pretty much it. I only did the veins on top, not on the back side. And then uh, the inking. So depending on what colors you select, you know, you're gonna want to pick out complementary inks to kind of work with it. Now with the pinks here, the pink um, cardstock, I just went with a little bit of a darker pink on the inking and then here on this this peach color i went with a red okay on this this one this transitional uh, leaf here i did a little bit of green in some spots but i also did some pink because it's kind of transitioning from the flower into the leaves and it's just kind of it's going to look really cool okay so i did a little bit of pink on just this color this light green the rest of this i just used a blue green Okay, this is called Gamma Green. This is my, uh, my go-to uh, ink, I guess. It's Dewdrop. Okay, and let me grab one of my little ink pads. I think I have one here, I do. And I'll show you two ways that I did this. Now on the smaller petals here, um, I may have kind of did a little bit of both. On the smaller petals, I just kind of dab on my ink and I did some of this by hand. Uh, the outer edges, well, a couple ways of doing it. I'll show you all three ways of inking that I did and you just have to figure out which one works best for you depending on the size, um, you know, depending on how close everything is together, if you can actually get your fingers in there. So anyway, uh, I am using this little ranger tool just to kind of give me a little more leverage getting my ink on there and then I'm rubbing a little bit of it off because it tends to go on pretty heavy even though I don't try to get it that heavy it still does and I'm gonna start on the back start on the back just in case you don't like the result this will be forgiving because you're not going to see as much of the back so uh, method one is just a simple stroke like this 
where I kind of was just kind of doing circles and it's hitting the edge and then I can decide how far in it goes depending on how far in or how large I make the circle. Okay, so that was one way that I did this. I'm starting to realize that I think this glue makes my nose itch. Okay, so there is method number one. And you'll notice that on the AC cardstock on the smooth side, um, the ink doesn't go on as, as nicely as it does on the um, textured side. Anyway, that's fine. And so now I'm still using this technique here. I'm gonna continue doing it because I'm just kind of on a roll here. And you know, the backside isn't gonna be as prominent towards the tips. So you could probably, probably don't even have to ink the whole thing at the top. I'm doing it because I'm kind of OCD and I, I wanna make sure that if I'm gonna do the job, I'm gonna do it right. Okay, so I'm getting it all the way up there like that. Okay, so that's method number one. Uh, another method that I use, depending on, again, the size and the um, amount of space between each of the petals, I just did it by hand, where I just kind of take it and graze the top while kind of hitting the edge as well. This probably takes a lot longer. Okay. And just play around with it. Try all these different techniques and see which one works best for you. Not all of them are gonna maybe work the same for you. You might kind of see a little little nuance here or there, and maybe you know maybe this technique gives you bolder edges, or I don't know, maybe it just gives you the look that you desire. Okay, so that's another technique there. And then finally, one other thing that I was doing was I was just kind of doing the same thing I was doing with with that little tool, but with just your finger, you do have a little bit more control over where it's going because it's not a huge surface. You've got just the tip of your finger and you can do it this way too. So there's no right or wrong way. And again, I'm doing this on the back first just to kind of get some practice, even though I've been inking like a crazy person for the last hour or so. Okay, so there you go. And you can see how that looks very nice and natural. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this back on my applicator and I'm gonna do this again, but this time on the front, which is gonna be the side where we're gonna see it most. And I, I kinda hate wasting all this ink, but I also don't wanna have to start over on my project, so better safe than sorry. I suppose that over time, we get a feel for how much I need to apply, but the problem with the inks are, is they're never, they're never consistent, because you don't always, you know, when you get a new one, it's so chock full of ink that you barely have to dab it, and you end up with a ton on there, and depending on what look you're going for, if you get too much on there, maybe it ruins the look you're going for. Oh, that was ESPN, my apologies. Okay, so you can see how that's starting to look. You can see the, the nice contrast there. Okay, let me get some off of there, and I'll work on the other side. So yeah, you know, I think uh, inking is really going to take this thing over the top. Uh, there's so much going on with this piece that if you didn't ink, I think it's still gonna look good because, I mean, you can see this one here. It still looks awesome and there's not a touch of ink on this. So it's up to you. Um, the, only th the only one that I've seen with ink on it is Ron's prototype. And um, I only saw that in a photo, which didn't really you know, do it justice. And I think I may have seen it on FaceTime, but even then, you don't really get a feel for it. Okay, so here I am now using this method because I'm afraid that if I use this thing on this little center part, I'm just gonna make a mess. So I'm trying to be a little more precise. 
And again, there's no wrong way of doing this. You know, you may want to just cut one of these out, just one, and just practice on it. You don't have to fully, you know, again, you don't, if you mess up, you can always recut one of these and just do it until it looks good. And then eventually you'll have the process down pat and it'll be easy. But again, this, this process is the same for all of these little petals. There's nothing really different. It's just you're doing different colors and things are either bigger or smaller. See, now this time I'm doing little circles. And for some reason, I think the circles work better than draw, you know, scrubbing it up and down like that. I think I'm just kind of hitting, hitting all sides of these little textures in this, um, this basket weave texture that the American Crafts cardstock has. And that looks really cool. One more little dab should do it. I always like to make the tips. I like to kind of cover up the tip a little bit, like completely with the ink. So it just looks more natural. And then of course you can always just kind of, if you want to bring it in a little bit and kind of smooth it out, you can always just kind of go up and down like that. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, it is game time. We're gonna start putting together the actual bromeliad here. And in your, uh, in your cutouts, you're gonna find a little template like this. Okay, it's got a series of little cuts and this is gonna help us. Well, we're gonna take a pencil and we're going to kind of draw these lines onto our dowel so that we know where to place each layer. And before I do that, um, the top part here, I'm just gonna hit this with some ink and just kind of make it pink so that the pink color or the wood color doesn't show through. I mean, it, it really shouldn't show up. You can get some paint if you want. I think the ink's just fine. This is just to hide the wood color in case a little bit of it shows through. And I'm just gonna kind of finish it off. Okay, now, let me put this away. <clears throat> so we're gonna take our little template here and you'll see that there's a T, a T for top, and B for bottom, okay? And we're gonna put the top flush with the top of our dowel, okay? If you want, just to kinda make it easier on you, you can take and just kinda tape this temporarily. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of tape at the top and just tape it flush to the top, like so. Okay, and it'll kind of hold it in place a little bit better for us. And then what we're gonna do, actually let me scoot this over a little bit so it's more next to it rather than on top of it. And I just, I just ink the top of that so it's not really staying very well, but that's okay. You get the idea. So get that nice and flush with the top. If it's off by just a smidge, it's not the end of the world. But go ahead and draw a little line where that line is on our little template. And just continue doing that all the way down until you've drawn all of the lines with your pencil. I'm gonna, after I get this template out of the way, I'm going to draw the line all the way around because there's gonna be points during the assembly where we're not starting right where that little line is drawn. Okay, so that's it. And you can see the little lines drawn on my dowel. And I'm gonna do my best to kind of keep it nice and lined up. And if it's not perfect, it's okay. As long as you get the gist. As long as it pretty much ends up right back where it started. That's all we're looking for. Okay, I'm gonna just draw it all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Oops, that was not good. Try to keep it as straight as you can, but don't 
Don't freak out if you're a little off. Okay, so you get the idea here. And this is just gonna help us with the placement of all of these layers so that we're more accurate. Just so that we know where it's going, okay? So there you go, okay? So um, we've got a little number system here. And uh, this piece here, we're gonna start with the flower. We're gonna start from the top and work our way down. So I'm gonna grab all of my pink and dark pink pieces here. <clears throat> this little piece here that has the three, it's got a number, a, like it's just a number one, a Roman numeral we'll call it, even though it's kind of our own system. It's just got a one there. Um, this is actually gonna get glued right to the top, but we're not gonna use this right now. So put that off to the side. This is actually gonna go on last, even though it has the number one on it. Now we wanna find the pieces that have the number two. Okay, so look through all of these and find the one that has a number two on it. And I thought there were two number twos. Oh wait, no, I'm sorry. Find the number two and the number three. <clears throat> okay, so these are identical. Okay, so two and three. All right, now, um, when we curl these out, I want the texture side up. Okay, I want the texture side to be um, kind of, well, I want it to be more prominent. Okay, so what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna curl this. Uh, let me find the right dowel here. Oh, geez, there goes my hot glue gun. All right, so we have number two and number three. And the topmost, I'll show you my prototype. As you can see, as we work our way down, you get more of a curl. Obviously we have larger leaves and larger petals as we work our way down, but towards the top, uh, we're just gonna be curling mostly just the tips. We're not gonna be training the entire petal. Okay, so what I mean by that is I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna take a, a smaller dowel here and I'm just gonna literally pinch it between my finger and the dowel and curl it like you're curling your hair and just run it run it along like this, okay? And I'm gonna bring it down pretty much all the way and just release it, okay? Because we can always kind of fix it back up if we need to. And this again is piece number two, okay? So again, I'm just gonna pinch it onto my dowel and just roll it like a rolling, or a, a curling iron kind of, if you're trying to make curls in your hair, okay? And we can bring that back up. And that's kind of what we're looking for. And we can always do this later on once it's on our actual dowel. And I'm gonna go ahead and curl this around here just to kind of train it and get it to, just get it to kind of start assuming that it's gonna be round like this, okay? I'm not gluing anything or doing anything yet, I'm just kind of shaping it, okay? So there we go. And what we wanna do uh, let's see here. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I'm doing this right. Okay. So what we want to do is we're going to start by, we're going to start by gluing this onto our dowel. Well, you know what, actually I'm using really strong tape. This is super hold tape. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of this tape right on the edge here. I'm gonna have a little bit of it sticking off as well. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, line it up with that first line. Okay, and then we can tape this down so it's holding nicely. Okay, and you wanna just wrap this around nice and tight, as tight as you can go. So just kind of grab the other end and wrap it around as tight as you can while trying to maintain it just above that line or on that line. Okay, so tighten it as, as tight as you can. Okay, and grab another piece of tape, hold that in place, and just tape that down so that you get a little bit of tape on the actual end so that you can tape it to the other end and also down the dowel a little bit. Okay, so there is the first little layer. All right, so now number three, which is this guy here, three is gonna go right on top of 
number two. Okay, so let's do that. Let's, let me train this again. And again, I want the texture side up. So I'm gonna take and just kind of curl this onto my dowel. I think I'm using the same one. Actually, I'm, I'm not. Let me use this one here. I'm gonna curl this pretty much all the way down. You can always kind of flare it back up if we need to, which we will. Okay. So again, this is piece number three. And I'm just kind of curling it. Bring it back up. Okay. Now what we want to do, and let's get our tape on the shorter edge here, right here, just like that. I want to place this and stagger it so it's not sitting right on top of the other one. You want it in the middle of both of them and also flush at the bottom with the previous layer so that they're sitting right on top of each other uh, as accurately as possible. Okay, so once you find that, and you can always do take a look from this angle I'm looking at it face on like this. And you know, one thing I forgot to do is kind of wrap this around a little bit just to kind of, before I tape it, just to kind of train it and make it cylindrical. Okay, find that, find that sweet spot where it's staggered just enough and wrap it around a little bit. And just kind of get an idea of whether or not you've got it in the right spot. Okay, so I'm staggering it. I'm kind of just taking, making sure that this pedal is in between these two pedals that are already there as closely as possible. Okay, make sure it's level and make sure it's nice and lined up with the previous layer. And then just press that down. I'm just using tape. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this and just wrap it around nice and tight, trying to keep it nice and level with the previous layer. And there we go. So you can see from the top, and it's not always gonna be perfect, so don't go for perfection. It might be a little bit off, and that's okay. When all's said and done, we get all of these layers in place, it's gonna look really nice, okay? So let's grab our tape. You could hot glue this if you want, but I think it might get a little bulky. So I'm just using this extra strong tape and each layer is gonna kind of help the previous layer out a little bit, okay? But there you have it. Okay, there's the first layer. And I think I did a better job with this first layer than I did the previous. Okay, so that is section two and three. Now we need four and five. Okay, four, it's gonna look like this. It looks like a little circle, but it's four individual score lines in a square shape. So that is your four, and then we need our five, which is that little circle with the four slash marks and a one, okay? So I always wanna make sure that we do it in the correct order. <clears throat> All right, and we're gonna do number four first. And I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my dowel and I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. I'm gonna curl it. Curl each of these little petals here. All the way down. And when I was doing this first one, for some reason, I was channeling Joe from uh, what's that show called? Pranksters? Gosh, my brain's just not working. That prank show. Pract Impractical Jokers, that's what it is. And I kept saying to myself, a little train ski, a little poke ski. All right, so we're gonna also train this just to make it round. Okay, and again, this is piece number four. And 
number four is going to go on the next line down. Okay. Actually, I trained that the wrong way. I'm going to train it this way. I trained the pedals the right way. I just didn't train the main thing here the right way. Okay. So layer number four is going to go right here. And again, you want to make sure that you're staggering these. Okay. So this next section, um, I want it kind of in between those other two. Okay. So when we go around and I'm not, I'm not taping or gluing anything down now, I'm just kind of getting a visual on how this is going to look and that's, that's fine. So grab your tape and let's get it on this flat edge. Okay. Go, whoops. And just get that, just stagger that so that it's kind of in between these two pedals here. Make sure it's nice and straight. And I'm just going to tape that down. And then I'm going to take this and just wrap it nice and tight, following that line, just kind of tug on it as you're wrapping it just to get it nice and super tight. Okay, grab your tape. I should have had that ready, actually, just to make life easier. You can kind of grab it up here so that you have a little more room to get your tape down, just like that. There we go. Okay, so you see what that's starting to look like. And that's a little out of focus. Take a look at the other camera. You can see what that's starting to look like. And, uh, well, <clears throat> we're on to piece number five. And this is why I suggested doing this so that you can kind of put this in here to kind of hold it up so nothing gets creased or messed up while you're working on the next layer. So I'm going to go ahead and curl these a little curl ski. Just kind of curl that down. And again, we can always, can always flare it back up if we get too much curl, but it's a lot easier to do this now than it will be later when it's actually on the dowel. Okay. So again, this is piece number five and piece number five is going to go on that same line that piece number four went on, but we're just going to try to stagger this. Okay. So I need to curl it. I need to curl it this way, just like that. I'm going to grab my tape. <clears throat> and I believe that on all the prototypes that we did, we used the tape. And it's holding up really well. I, like I said, I've got the, the extra hold tape. All right, so now this layer here, again, we want to stagger this. So just kind of put it in between the two pedals on the previous same line. We're not moving down just yet. We're staying on this line. And just kind of get a, take a look from above head if you need to. And take a look at where they're going to terminate, where they're going to end up if you place it right there. I'm very happy with how that looks. Make sure it's nice and flush with the previous layer and then go ahead and tape that down. Okay. And just wrap it around nice and tight, nice and tight over that previous layer. And now when these start to get a little bit larger, these pieces, um, they may not wrap around perfectly straight and that's okay. Do your best. Most importantly, Take a look at the position and the angle of each of the pedals and make any adjustments so that they're, you know, so that they're flat and straight. We don't want them to be kind of like sideways like that. You want them to be nice and straight. Okay. So whatever you need to do to achieve that is what you want to do. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay. And that looks good to me. I should have grabbed my tape. Remember, this is only my second time doing this, so I'm still kind of kind of new to this, but that looks nice. Okay. And again, we're going to go through, go back here and kind of um, fix these up a little bit later on if we need to. I think what I'll probably end up doing is maybe even use something skinnier up at the top to make these curls a little bit more pronounced. 
but that is looking real sharp so far. I love the inking. This is going to be a really sharp piece. Okay, so that leads us to, we just did four and five. Now we need six and seven. Okay, so here is my, here's my six. Six is the four little marks in a circle that create basically a square. So that's four, five, six. Same thing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so six is gonna go on first. And again, we're on the next layer here. We're going down now. Okay, but same process. I'm gonna take and I want these to come out this way. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this around. Okay, these, now as we're getting down more, again, these are gonna curl even less and less but I'm still gonna kind of curl these just to kind of curl them. And then we can kind of flare them up a little bit if we need to, because we want them to kind of go straight up and then start curling. Okay, so let's just do that. Let's get these curled, excuse me. Just curl that, let it loose and then just bring it up like that. And we can kind of loosen that up a little bit too. And next one, a little curl ski. Okay, and bring that up. I want them to be kind of erect and then start curling. And if we need to curl them out more, we can always do that. Later on, I'm gonna take my dowel now and curl that, get that ready. And my piece of tape right on the edge so that it overlaps this way and a little bit going down. Okay, again, stagger them, find that sweet spot, I'm kind of putting this petal in between these two here and doing a little eagle eye overhead look to see how that's gonna look. Once it's in place, make sure that it's nice and staggered, nice and level. And I'm gonna put that down, that looks good. And then wrap it around nice and tight. Try to keep it on that same plane. Okay, and check your, check your little petals here. Make sure that they're nice and straight. go. That looks good. I'm grab my tape. Nice and tight, don't forget. And just tape that down. Okay, and again, these need to start curling a little bit less. And we want some separation. Okay, so you can see it's almost kind of looking like the hydrangea a little bit, but not really. The bromeliad, okay. All right, so now we're on to piece number eight. I'm sorry, seven. Okay, now this is where we start getting into the other color, but uh, it's gonna be the same thing here. And now actually with this, I'm just gonna start, start training it. Let me train this one back. Ah, this one actually has some little score marks on it. So what we want to do is we do want to fold at the score marks and then also maybe just fold just a pinch just a little bit above where the score lines terminate. Okay, so give those a pinch right about there. And it's just going to help hug the surface of our dowel a little bit better. Okay, and then Actually, I needed to pinch that the other way. My bad. Pinch that the other way. Because I want, I want the top of this, depending on the curve, to show the texture, okay? So I need to pinch it the other way. That's fine, not a big deal. Just remember when we're wrapping it around, try to remember uh, which side you want to be kind of coming down, okay? So this certainly needs to be trained more. And I think I'm gonna take this and curl this 
all the way down because I can always uncurl it a little bit, curling it almost all the way down to the score mark. Okay, I think once we get to the leaves, I'm going to be doing a lot less curling and we're just going to be doing some more training. Okay, so let's curl that all the way, almost all the way down to the score mark. There we go. And I think the inking is really, really going to show through here and make this thing a real standout piece. I can't wait to see what it's going to look like when it's done. I was very happy with the prototype that I made. So I should be even happier with the final result here. Okay, great. So now let's grab our piece of tape, just as we did. And this is piece number seven. And seven is still going on top of piece number six but there is a color change happening here. So we are going right on top, same plane here. And again, we wanna stagger this, so make sure that you put it in between the other flower that's already existing. Take a kind of an overhead look, make sure you've got it placed correctly. And then I'm just gonna pull that over, see how that looks. Kind of might have to kind of dip and dive in between these petals here a little bit. And that looks, that looks really nice. Okay. And again, we can always finesse this later on, but that looks really sharp. Let me grab my next little piece of tape here. And again, just kind of pull it nice and tight around the dowel and just tape that down. Okay, look at that. That is looking really sharp. Look at that. All right, cool. All right. All right, so we are on to piece number eight. And piece number eight is going to go one level lower than the previous piece here. So again, I'm going to take my dowel and you know, the first time around, I don't think I curled all of these like this, but I think that maybe the result is gonna be a little bit better if we do. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna train this first like that. And you know what, maybe with these, I'm just gonna curl the tips here after training them a little bit. I really like the look that that's giving me. I'm not gonna curl this all the way down, just um, maybe about halfway or so. Okay, and then just kind of let that loose. And you can always kind of unravel it once we get it all curled up. Okay, and these here, I forgot to do this. We do need to pinch these. Well, let's finish curling and then we'll pinch. Give it a good pinch. Okay, and we kind of want them to be erect and then start kind of folding over like that. So keep them slightly erect there. And then, yeah, that is that's how we want to do it. Just pinch it here, just above where the score mark terminates. And that will actually help keep them a little more erect. There we go. Just like that. All right, now let's grab our tape, put it on the little edge here that doesn't have this little hump like that. Grab our dowel. And again, we're staggering again. Okay, so is this piece number eight? Yeah, it is. Piece number eight is gonna go one level lower than the previous layer. Okay, again, make sure you got it nice and staggered. And 
also try to kind of stagger it from the even the previous layer above the one that we just did. Okay, so tape that down. And we may have to kind of move some petals around to get the other ones through so that we can get this in here nice and tight. Excuse me, Mr. Petal. There we go. Try to keep it on that line. Keep the petals nice and straight up if possible. Get that one under. Just like that. And there we go. Just gonna take some messing around with and then again, just take a look from above. Get it as best as you can. They're not always gonna be perfectly like staggered, so don't, don't freak out. Okay, that looks good. All right, so let me grab my tape. And just overall, just kind of looking at it all the way around, trying to keep those petals nice and straight up and down so they're not too overly curved. And just tape that down. And there we go. Okay, so that was number eight. <clears throat> now we're going over to our leaves. Okay, so we can move on to the little leaf portions now. Um, not much different than what we've been doing, except that they're leaves instead of flowers, even though they're almost the same. Um, you're gonna have a new set of digits here, one through four, except these are also gonna have a little L cut into them. That's how you distinguish between leaves and flowers. Okay, so this one here, We've got uh, number one, there's two number ones, okay, as you can see here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the individual one first. Okay, so I'm gonna train this, give it a nice curl, and I will probably just kinda curl the tip a little bit too, just to kinda get that nice and Kind of like that. We can always go in and fix this up, and then the layers that are below this um, we're gonna curl those even less and less. Okay, so this one also has some score marks, so go ahead and pinch just slightly above where the last score line is. Okay, there we go. Of course, it's already inked. Grab your tape, and just put your tape on one side here. Oops, make sure that it's going down a little bit too so that we can tape it down to the dowel. Okay, and we're going down to the next line here. Okay, so again, make sure that you stagger it nicely. Okay, get it nice and in between the last, the last two here. And take a look maybe from overhead. Make sure you've got it nice and centered. And then go ahead and tape that down on one side. Grab another piece of tape. And this one is pretty easy to wrap since it's just an individual piece and get that down. Okay, you can see how that's starting to unfold here. Okay, I'll put that back in there for just a moment. And I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna train these. So they're like that. And I'm probably gonna take and kind of just curl the tip a little bit. Or you could do it this way too. So that's kind of pointing down more. Gravity is taking a hold of these. Okay, we've got um, we've got some score marks here, so we want to go ahead and fold at the score marks and just pinch just slightly above that last little score mark. Oops. There we go, and that's going to keep them nice and erect while also helping us kind of hug the dowel. Throw your piece of tape on there. I've got it kind of dangling off of the bottom a little bit. Okay, now this one here, this is uh, piece number, well, this is still number one. And the way this works is you're gonna grab this and you're gonna tuck this so that these two go over the other one here so that the first one that we put down is in the middle of these two. Okay, and you want to try to get them as centered as possible. 
Again, making sure that you have it nice and lined up with that line that we drew. And then just fold it over. Once you have it nice and centered, fold it, kind of curl it over. And make sure that, there we go. I have to move that out of the way. There we go. And then we're gonna take this one and just nice and tight, wrap it around the dowel. Try to keep it nice and in line with that last little line that we drew. Get it nice and tight, wrap it around just like that. Okay, you can kind of see it from the other angle there. Nice and tight. And grab some tape, kind of tighten it as much as you can. You've got, you got a little rip in it there, but that's okay. That next layer is going to hide that, so it's not a big deal. And just tape that down. Okay, there we go. And I can already tell that I may want a little bit more curve in this, so you can just literally just take it and just kind of bring it in. Just kind of curl it like that. There we go. There, perfect. Okay, so that was number one. <clears throat> now we're gonna go over to number two. Let's find our number two. This is the L with the two. So that's what we want that. And then we're gonna need <clears throat> the one with the two leaves on it. So this is L2. So we need these three pieces, okay? And process is exactly the same here. So I'm gonna grab my dowel, I'm gonna train my leaf. I'm gonna pinch all the way up to just above the little score mark there. Okay, grab my tape. And we're going one layer down as far as the lines go. And again, this is number two. So you can see the next next line here, and take a look at take a look at the previous layer. You'll notice that there's one little section here that kind of has more of a gap than the other sections. We're gonna start this one in that area there, where there's a little bit more of a gap between those last that last set of um, leaves. Okay, so that's kind of how we want it, just like that. We can always finesse things um, after the fact as well. So don't worry about it if it's not looking perfect. Get that nice and tight around there and tape that down. Okay, there we go. It's starting to look nice. Okay, so we're on to uh, piece number two, the second of piece number two. And just as we did the first time, I'm gonna go ahead and train this. Okay. And let's see here. Let me add a little curl to this. I do kind of like that a little bit more. I'm gonna go back to the first uh, first one here and kind of curl this a little bit too. The first one that's already up there, just a little, a little curl, okay? And again, there's score marks on this one. So let's give it a pinch. A little pinch ski just above the little score mark there. Okay, and let's get our tape. And pop our tape right on there. And just as we did with the previous layer, we're gonna take this and just kind of slide it under the existing one. This is going on the same line. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we get it nice and centered I'm gonna take a, pull this one over now and take a look at how it's sitting. Make sure that the scored area stays scored. Let me see if I can show you that a little bit better. There you go, like that. Okay, make sure you got it nice and in between that existing piece there and tape that down. Okay, and then we can take that and just wrap it around. Might have to kind of duck underneath previous layer there, get it nice and tight. 
uh, maintain that scored part there so that it stays nice and erect. Okay, and just get it nice and tight. There we go, just like that. Okay, grab your tape. Get it nice and tight, nice and level. If you get a little rip here and there, don't worry about it. That next layer is gonna hide it, so it's no big deal. Okay, and you may need to kind of finesse some things here and there, but you can see how that is starting to come together. Take a look at the other camera there. Okay, looking sharp. And that is number two. So now let's find number three. Number three is these pieces here. And there's a little L with three little tick marks. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Okay, and again, we're gonna start with the individual piece. I'm gonna give this a curl, just like that. And then I'm gonna kind of curl this just, just towards the top a little bit, like so. There we go. And a little pinch ski right up just above the score mark there. Just like that. Okay, grab your tape. And pop your tape on there. And again, take a look at the last layer that we have on there. You'll notice that there's a little bit more of a gap on one side here. You can see how there's less of a gap here, less of a gap here, more of a gap here. That's where I'm gonna place my first one on the next line down. Get that nice and centered between the previous layer there. Glue that or tape that down. Grab your tape and make sure it's nice and tight. And then tape the other edge of that down. Let me actually zoom out a little bit here. You can kind of see that a little better now. Okay, great. So now I'll put that back in the little holder there and just kind of continue on down. I'm gonna train this. And then I'm gonna curl just the top, maybe top third or so. You could also do it this way. If you use a smaller dowel, you'll get more of a curve. There you go, see that? There we go, okay. And a little pinch at the score mark. All right, just above it. And another little pinch. Now one thing I haven't been doing that might help is kind of curling this and just kind of training this to make it a little more round. I haven't really had any issues since I haven't been doing it, but it can't hurt. Okay, so let's grab our tape and wait a second. I pinched it the wrong way. You're probably going to end up doing that a few times too. You got to pinch it the other way. And I should have curled it the other way too, but that's fine. All right, so put our tape on there. There we go. And this is going on the same layer as that single one. And again, we're going to take this and slide this up so that the previous, um, the previous little leaf is in between these two. Okay, so kind of line that up with the line. Make sure that it is in between. Here you can see the, the previous leaf is right here on this layer. You can see there that it's just that individual one. We're gonna slide this up and keep it nice and centered in between that. Just wrap it around and tape it down. Okay, and then take that and get it nice and tight. All the way around. There we go. I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. There we go. And this one's got a curl 
little bit more. Again, we're going to finesse this in just a moment here once we get all these on here. And let's get this taped down. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, that looks good to me. And let's just tape that down. Okay, and now at this point here, I may want to, I think that this layer here might need to go up a little bit more. And this one here needs to come down a little bit more. I'm gonna straighten that out just a tad. Okay, so that just leaves the final layer of leaves. And I'm just kind of finessing things because what you want at the end of the day here, when we're all, everything's said and done, we want this to gradually kind of slant more, kind of just create a, um, well, kind of like a, a, a triangular shape, okay? I mean, it's, it's, it's completely circular in that, in that sense, but um, if you look at it from the side, you want it to kind of, you know, come in um, in a triangular shape. So uh, let's head over to the number four now. And again, this is no different than what we have just been doing. Now the number four is gonna have an L. There's two of these. They're both gonna have an L on it. And then you've got four tick marks that kind of create a square or a circle shape. And that's our number four. Okay, so do the same thing here. Okay, and let's give that a pinch just above the score mark there. Grab our tape. Pop that on there. Okay, now again, take a look at the layering on this and figure out where we're kind of missing a leaf. I'm, I can just tell that we certainly need one over here to kind of balance this out. So that's where I'm gonna start with this one. And again, I pinched it the wrong way. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put this one last layer here. I'm gonna get that nice and centered in that little gap area where I feel like it needs a little bit more. Okay. And just tape that down. And then grab another piece of tape. Make sure it's nice and tight, nice and level, nice and straight up and down. And just tape that down. Okay. Finally there. Okay, and the last one here. Give that a little train. And I need to pinch it from this side. Again, look for that little score mark there. Just above the score mark is where you want to terminate your pinch. Or where you want to pinch, not necessarily terminate it. And did I do that right? Nope. Got to pinch it the other way. I don't know why I keep doing that. My brain's getting confused. It's getting kind of late. I've been kind of crafting all day. Okay, so. And then this one here, again, this one's going on the same line as the previous one. We're going to slide it up between the existing single leaf that we already have on there. So here is the existing single leaf. You can see how it's on that next line. We're going to slide this up in between the existing leaf. Make sure we get it nice and centered. Okay, and just kind of wrap that around holding it in place. That's good. And then nice and tight, bring it around. Make sure those leaves stay nice and up. Okay, and just get that nice and tight. Grab your tape. 
There we go. There we go. And just tape that down into place. Just like that. And there we have it. Okay, so that is, that is looking great. Looking very sharp. Okay. And once I get it in the planter, again, I'm, I'm gonna go and kind of finesse this a little bit. There is one, one more little layer here that we're going to put on here. It's this layer here, okay? And this is pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna curl, actually, I'm gonna just go ahead and kind of uh, do the hair curler thing right at the tip. I just want these to kind of go like that just a little bit. I don't want to train the entire thing, just the tips. Okay, and this is actually gonna go right over that same layer where those that last set of leaves is. Okay, I just wanna curl it like that. I just want them like that. You can see it from a side angle there. And let's, uh, let's kind of train this a little bit. Make it round like that. And take this guy. Oops, let me grab my tape first. Grab a little bit of tape, put it right on the edge here. Oops, that was a little too high. Okay, right on top of that existing, same line basically is what I'm trying to say. Same line as the previous layer. Get that glued into place on that same line. Or sorry, taped into place and then just wrap it around nice and tight. Grab your tape, oops, and Get that taped into place, just like that. Okay, so that bottom layer looks just like that, and there you have it. Uh, I'm actually very thrilled with how this came out. Like I said, I'm gonna finesse this a little bit more, uh, maybe curl some more little areas, maybe fluff up some other areas. So I'll try to take a, a number of photos um, so that you can see the final result from all the various angles. And one other thing that I want to do to kind of clean this up a little bit is I'm going to grab some floral tape and just kind of polish off the bottom of this thing so there's no wood showing. Uh, mine, mine is cut perfectly to where you don't really see it at all, but this will also kind of keep it in place a lot better too. So I'm just gonna grab some floral tape and just tape this all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna stretch out your floral tape so you get that, that wax, that sticky stuff out. Okay, all the way to the bottom. I guess I probably could have used a darker green floral tape, but it's not really gonna be that visible. Oh, and then there's also just the little top part that we still have to put into place and we'll do that here in just a moment. Let me just get this on here. Just tear that off. Pop that in. Okay. Make sure that's nice and centered. Perfect. Okay, so that just leaves the top part now, which is this guy here. And I've already got this inked. Now this one here, um, all I wanna do is I'm just going to curl this, just the very tip of this, just a tiny little bit so that it's like, just kind of like that. Okay, you can see how that's curled just a little bit right at the top. Just like that. Just so it's barely, barely curled right at the tip. Okay, and we're going to glue this together using this little tab here. Okay. And just to glue that right to the inside of the next little section. Well, it's neighbor, obviously. Okay, just hold that in place for a moment. And then what you can do, I'm just gonna hot glue this. 
I've got my hot glue kind of sitting here waiting for me to do something with it. I'm going to throw a little bit of hot glue right on the bottom of this. Maybe cake it on pretty good. There we go. Hopefully that comes back out. It's kind of going in. There's that little pesky strand that I just really dislike. And then just drop that right into the top. Make sure that you offset it a little bit. I'll show you that. There you can see that it's a little blurry just because I... there we go. Okay, take a look at, let me pull this out real quick so you can see it better. Oh, it's got the floral tape in there. It's a little harder to see, but you can see how I just pop that right into the top there. Okay, so you can see how I just kind of threw some hot glue on the bottom of that and just jammed it right on top of that dowel, kind of offsetting it a little bit so that it's not on top of the previous layer, uh, previous layer of petals. Okay, but that is pretty much it. Well, that about does it for this. Uh, the only thing that I'm going to do to kind of finish this off, obviously I'm going to decorate the uh, planner. I've got... Uh, we've got some pearls and some little pendants that are going to go in the various sections. So take a look at the final photo to kind of see what that's going to look like. And I've got some moss here that I'm going to fill this uh, planter with. And this stuff, this stuff kind of smells funny. But here, you know what, let's take this out for a second before we do this. And uh, let me pop this right here. It's my secret little holder. I'll just fill this in with some nice moss. I've got a nice light green moss. And we're gonna kind of mound it around the center. What is that? I thought, those, I thought there were bugs in there. It kind of freaked me out. So I'll just take a little moss, fill that in, and Got plenty of this stuff here. I'm not gonna fill it in all the way. I wanna get the, the flower back in here. Bring it all the way down. Kind of scooch that in. And then just kind of build a little mound around the center of it. Just fill in the little gaps. In there, there we go. That's looking nice. Okay. So you get the idea here. That's pretty much it. I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm gonna put a few little pearls on the outside of the planter just to kind of add a little bling to it. But take a look at that, a real life paper bromeliad, courtesy of the Dreaming Tree team. Really proud of the team and uh, really impressed with Ron's abilities to take papers and turn them into, or take flowers and make paper versions of them. I'm really loving this piece and I, I hope you do too. If you make this or any of the projects from our new bundle, I'd love to see it. So take a moment and visit us on Facebook by doing a search for Dreaming Tree Group and join myself and the 11,000 plus other dreamers that inspire us daily. And if you loved the video and you loved crafting with me, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. And that lets me know that you uh, enjoy crafting with me and um, that you like me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I appreciate you spending the time with me and I look forward to crafting with you again. Stay on top of all things Dreaming Tree and engage with us today. Get the latest news and enter in our giveaways on Facebook. Get inspired by following us on Pinterest. Be the first to see our new product launches on Instagram. Do you prefer Twitter? Yep, we're there too. Watch our beautiful product trailers and assembly tutorials on YouTube. 
For more information, visit www.3dsvg.com. Live, craft, love, and dream.